Hey guys, welcome to part two of this special series of Awesome Build where we look at the Mad Max Fury Road review props and costumes. So I did initially shoot a bunch of footage from behind the scenes kind of stuff that I intended to release um, either as a part of this series, like an Awesome Build type show, or maybe just even a behind the scenes or a special feature for one of the DVDs. Let's take a look. Hey everybody. All right, so today we're gonna to be building Immortem Joe's mask from Mad Max Fury Road. Last Halloween, I picked this up thinking that I was gonna build a steampunk gas mask. I was gonna have a couple of canisters sticking out of it, had some goggles and stuff. And it wasn't long after that I picked it up, just sat on my shelf, that they released a trailer for Mad Max Fury Road. And then instantly I knew that uh, this was going to be Immortem Joe's mask. However, it's been a year and it's just been sitting on my shelf and finally this project has come up and it's given me the excuse to actually go through with it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to turn this into this. It's a good basic shell, but it's not <laughs> very movie accurate, obviously. So we're going to be making a lot of alterations, uh, cutting quite a bit of it out and re-sculpting and probably sanding some pieces down and of course painting and everything. What I'll be uh, sculpting with is plastic weld. You guys have seen me use this all the time. Uh, plastic weld is a two-part epoxy putty that uh, it's good for plumbing and stuff like that. This particular one is made by JB Weld. Actually I'm not even sure if they make it anymore. Um, last time I was at the hardware store there was a bunch of them on clearance so I just bought them all up. They were uh, all marked down. So my, my guess is, is that they, either they make a similar product now or they discontinue this one. But I know that you can find other uh, plumber's putty like uh, epoxy putties that work pretty well. The reason I like this one is because it, it lasts a while. If you get it wet um, you can smooth it really nicely. Uh, it adheres really nice to plastic and it takes a little time to set. Some of them set within like five minutes some of them set within like three or four minutes, so you have a very limited amount of work time. Um, but this particular one kind of lasts a while, so you can kind of alter it and make changes and stuff like that as it's drying. Even even if you use a uh, plastic sculpt or something like that. Also, just a piece of uh, flexible tubing. Um, this one's a little small for for the one that's kind of in the movie. It's pretty close though. The reason I like this one is, one, it was very cheap, it was about 75 cents. <laughs> and two, is it's really flexible. If you buy like a, a vacuum hose, or I think they have like a hose for dishwashers and stuff like that, or um, and you go in the plumbing area, there's a couple of different types of uh, this ribbed hose. A lot of them are very rigid though and you don't have uh, a great deal of flexibility. I got this one actually at uh, American Science and Surplus. There was like a bin full of this flexible hose. You know, you could go to their website, americansciencesurplus.com, and I'm sure you would find uh, various hoses. I don't know if you find this particular one because it's kind of surplus stuff. They get a bunch of crap in, and as they sell it, you know, they might sell out and not ever carry it again, so. So, that being said, we're just going to dive right in and start sculpting. Uh, we'll probably be using some other various pieces of PVC and stuff like that, fittings for that go inside. Here, I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet. All of the detailing, stuff like that, we're actually going to just sculpt directly onto the mask. Everything is pretty much going to be covered up. I'm going to sand all of the, the chin area and the one in the movie actually is more divot. It's got kind of like that divot splits. So I have to re-sculpt a little bit there. And then the nose will probably have to be kind of ground down or sanded. And then it's got sort of a rounder um, end to it. it. It doesn't have this nub. And the teeth are going to have to be re-sculpted at least somewhat because... And the teeth on the mask in the movie they're sort of divided. It's, it's, there's like a two, one big tooth on either side. This one's actually got like a tooth in the middle and uh, two fairly 
big ones on the side, but um, yeah, so a lot of work needs to be done to this thing, but in the end, I think it's a pretty good, it's a good solid base, and uh, you don't have to cut out, you know, completely sculpt it from scratch. You've got, uh, you know it fits, and it already kind of has the look, you know what I mean? So, all right, let's get to it. So here I've already sanded down the chin and the nose and added some epoxy putty to the inside of the nose to kind of close it off. And here I'm using a sharpie to block off all of the areas where I'm going to add more of the epoxy putty or the plastic weld. I had to do it in sections because it does cure relatively quickly. It just gives me a better idea to know exactly how much I'm going to need and I can kind of see it ahead of time how it all is going to look or play out. So I took a piece of PVC that I'm going to use for the respirator to make those circles in the mouth. I'm going to round it out, clean up all the edges so that the piece of PVC fits really smooth. All right, and so now I'm finally applying the plastic weld, and you can see me wet my hands, and that's so that I can get a really clean, smooth finish without having to go in and sand it afterwards. Um, you can, it's sandable, it's drillable, it's carvable, but uh, what's really nice about the plastic weld is you can wet your fingers and go over it with your, you know, with your hands and smooth it out really nice and then you can get a really nice clean finish without having to go back and sand it. So now before it's completely cured, it's getting hard, but it's still a little bit of play in it. So I'm using that sculpting tool to add some of the little crevices and deep cuts and texture to the teeth and the chin and the different elements that aren't gonna be metal or that need to be clean, like things like the teeth and the bits of sinew and stuff like that in the upper jaw and lower jaw. And you can see I'm actually like doing little increments at a time. I'm breaking off small pieces, mixing it, and applying it as I go because I don't want to add too much. I want to make sure that I was using enough, but at the same time being very uh, conservative, I guess you could say, with the amount that I was applying so that I wouldn't have to try and take any off or do any sand or anything like that after the fact. I kind of wanted it all to just cure so that I could immediately go right into painting. All right, so for the uh, the connectors here for the respirator, uh, I was I got these PVC pieces, but then I also have uh, these little cannons that I was going to use for the truck model um, that I wound up not using, and the pattern on it is actually uh, great. Once you take the the actual cannon off, it has that texture and design that's very similar to the one on the respirator. So I'm going to attach those and then a piece of PVC and connect the hose. Um, but that actually is kind of a neat little find or it's a neat little kind of a happy accident as Bob Ross would say. Um, so yeah, it's just one of those things. So you never throw anything away. <laughs> if you uh, keep little bits of crap, eventually you'll use it on something. So <laughs> it's lesson of the day, kids. Okay, so I gave the entire mask a coat of black semi-gloss using the Krylon Color Fusion. I wanted to give it a semi-gloss so that when I added the metallic or the you know, gray metallic paint, it really made those metallic elements 
seam to pop and really like they had a really nice finish on them. Here I'm applying using some brown and just kind of dabbling it into all of the deep crevices and stuff. So that when I go over the next pass, I'm going to use a red to highlight all of the raised areas. Most of the time I just use spray paint. Sometimes I use some acrylics, but a lot of the time it's just spray paint. I'll just spray a little bit onto a piece of cardboard or some plastic and use a cheap brush and to do my dry brushing and stuff like that. Here I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing a couple of coats over the teeth and having it black it really leaves those little cuts and those grooves that I made in the teeth and in the jaw and stuff like that really pop. All the screws and rivets are sculpted. You don't have to sculpt them. You could use uh, like fake beads or um, actual screw heads and stuff like that pushed into the epoxy, but it was easier for me to just sculpt them as opposed to using the actual elements because it was just faster. Alright, so the paint job is done. Uh, pretty quick job. It's not perfect, but uh, you kind of get the idea. Um, yeah, looks enough like it, I think, to where it's still, still a little wet. It's not perfect, but it's mediocre. So that's it for this week, but tune in next week because we're going to continue the series. Part 3 is going to focus mostly on the Furiosa costume, that, or Curiosa costume actually, that we built for Tamara. And uh, a lot of it's going to be focusing on the arm and the mechanical arm and stuff like that. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.